I'm now going to say something about alpha D glucose. These are the two animas of glucose, alpha D and beta D. So the alpha D has a axial hydroxyl at that anomeric carbon position. And what happens when these molecules are joined together is you end up with some sort of spiral structure. And that spiral structure in dry starch will collapse down and form a, a crystalline uh, structure. Uh, but if you put it in water and you apply some heat to get the water molecules in there, because all these hydroxyl groups make it a little bit inaccessible, but if you like boil the starch up, these spirals will um, expand and they don't go into solution, but they'll form a suspension. After a while, if you keep this thing um, at a high enough temperature, uh, the spirals actually kind of intertwine with each other and the thing will suddenly thicken. Um, another thing that can happen, let's say we cook something like potatoes, uh, the, spi the starch will open up um, and make this nice sort of fluffy thing, it makes some mashed potatoes. But if you boil like new potatoes and let them cool down, the structure opens up, but then it, it doesn't go back to its original form, but it forms a slightly more uh, crystalline structure. And the reason I'm going on about this is because the openness of this structure is all about accessibility. And what happens is that the starch molecule in our stomach gets attacked by the, the weak acid in there and it starts to break open this chain. So the more accessible this chain is, uh, the quicker this will break down. And the cons consequences of that is you get a lot of glucose released into the body if we have too much of this in our diets. Bit of a distraction, but quite interesting, I think. <laughs>